that just the words that you heard sung or is that a commitment you're willing to make I'll tell the world that I'm a Christian there's a world out there that needs to hear it amen people that we encounter every day that need to hear that message and that's really where we want to to dive in this morning I want to thank Louis for preaching God's word last week I got to listen to about 20 minutes of his sermon before the uh, computer decided that it was full and uh, couldn't record anymore I really thought he preached a 20 minute sermon made me a little nervous because I don't preach 20 minute sermons um, but then I found out he was just got through his intro and was just getting into the meat of his message so I'm not sure how long y'all were here but I do appreciate him preaching and uh, looking forward to tonight hearing another one of uh, God's men preaching his word uh, tonight in David so and then just thank you church for allowing uh, my family and I uh, to get away for a couple of days to go enjoy Falls Creek and their hundredth year celebration it was an incredible couple of services to be at and then um, this time last week we were visiting one of our former churches and I got to go back there and realize that um, I don't think I had been back to that church for a Sunday morning service since I had left there uh, in 2000 so it was really good to be back and see those folks that were older then even older now and uh, that they still remembered me so anyway uh, but it's always good to go back and uh, be able to visit folks so thanks for allowing us to do that and it's good to be here today in God's house we, we want to continue to look at some of the building blocks uh, first steps if you will things that we need to do and uh, be continually doing in some respects as followers of of Christ things that we need to have in place if we're going to be growing and becoming more like uh, Christ who died for us we've looked at the idea of baptism we've looked at Lord's Supper and how those help identify us as followers of Christ they help us recognize what he has done for us and who we are in him now followers and partakers in all of the promises we looked at this at the significance of prayer and reading the Bible and uh, for those that have signed up to receive the text message from me I'm gonna get better at uh, being more consistent with that and uh, I've taken a few days off for some reason and so I'll get back on that if you want to join just text me uh, your number and I'll begin to send a scripture verse or passage every day and, and a prayer topic for the day just to join together in praying but we looked at that and the, the significance and importance of that of that and today I want to continue on these building blocks of our faith building on the foundation and I want us to think today about sharing our story what has Jesus done for us what difference is he making in our lives today I'll tell the world that I'm a Christian I'll tell the world who he is and what he's done for them how he's made a difference in my life I'll tell them that he's coming again and one day those that know him will be with him and those that don't know him won't I mean we've we've got to share our story so if you would find in your Bibles Matthew chapter 9 and we'll get there uh, in just a few moments Matthew chapter 9 let me ask you this what would you do if you had a wedding ring and your wedding ring ended up in a trash truck because you'd accidentally thrown it in the trash and it's gone would you just immediately decide I'm not gonna wear a wedding ring anymore uh, would you decide that I'm just gonna go and replace it or in that moment would you decide that you're gonna go and dig through tons of garbage in hopes that you would find that well it just so happens that uh, a lady by the name of Colleen um, Dykeman lives in a little town in New York last November was cleaning up her kitchen on a Sunday night and unaware she threw her wedding ring away she wakes up the next morning and getting ready and realizes at that moment that she has done just that she is at that moment has to make a choice she can hear the trash truck driving away the trash has already been picked up at her house 
she chooses to run out of the house and run down the road and run down the trash truck that's just houses down or however far, stops the driver, shares the story, I think my wedding ring is in, my, is in the trash. He calls his supervisor, and um, the guy's name is Edward Wiggins. He's the sanitation site crew leader in Babylon, New York, for the Department of their Environmental Control. What, I don't know how all that would fit on a business card, but that's kind of his title. He tells his driver, stop your route and begin looking through the trash. So for the next three hours, his workers and this lady are digging through literally tons of garbage on that trash truck in hopes of finding something about the size of that. Well, she's losing hope. She said, I'm not going to find it. But in the fourth hour, they've dug through six tons of garbage. That's how much garbage was on that truck. That's a lot of trash. They find the lost ring. Can you imagine her emotion at that moment? She says she just burst into tears, so grateful for their effort and energy. A few days later, she fixes them some brownies. She buys them some, some pizza pies, and she buys some cookies. She takes it to the crew and uh, over lunch. And that's when that site manager tells the newspaper. I mean, this is how it's recorded in the newspaper. And then that's telling her, said, you know, he's worked here 41 years. And that's only the third time that they've ever found anything when they've stopped to dig through the trash. I got to thinking, <laughs> I might have to dig through some trash looking for a set of keys because we've lost the keys to Brianna's car that's out here in the parking lot, parked as it is. And uh, might have to dig through the trash tonight just to make sure it's not there before they pick it up in the morning. Uh, only have to dig through one ton of trash that way instead of six tons after it gets in the trash truck. Are y'all all right? Okay. Hmm. It just got me to thinking. In a moment, in just one moment, she made a decision. I've got to have that ring back. If there's any chance, I've got to have that ring back. And so she runs out of her house, chases down the truck, and makes that plea. She makes a decision in a moment. And then I think about how elated she must have been, rejoicing when she finds that ring. You know, the Scripture speaks to that idea on a spiritual sense. We're not looking at that particular passage of Scripture today, but the Scripture tells us about how a shepherd gets excited when he's lost one sheep out of a hundred and he goes and he finds that one sheep and brings it back. How a lady, when she loses one of her gold coins, tears her house apart looking for it, sweeping, cleaning, doing everything she can, and how excited she is. She throws a party when she finds that coin and tells everybody that she's found that coin. There's excitement in the scripture when something that is lost is found. Do you understand that lost souls, people that we know People that we don't know, that don't know Jesus, are way more important to Him than a lost wedding ring. That they are so important to Him that He would die for them. He said in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus summed up His mission and why He came was to dig through the trash to find the ring. He came so that that which was lost could be found. The 
power of a moment. Look at Matthew chapter 9, beginning in verse 35. In this passage of Scripture, Jesus is going to show us the importance as well as the power of a moment to act when moved. He's going to show us the importance of recognizing and sharing with those that need to know Him. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and every affliction. And when He saw the crowds, He had compassion for them because they were harassed sheep without a shepherd and then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest let's stop right there Jesus going throughout all the cities and villages, doing what He's doing, proclaiming the good news of the Gospel, proclaiming the fact that there is forgiveness of sin. He's healing people. He's bringing them physical healing and spiritual healing. Proclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom. What's the Gospel? It's the good news. What's the good news? Jesus Christ forgives sin. Eternal life can be had by all. And he's healing the diseases and every affliction. And He sees the crowd. And He says, I'm just too tired to do anything with you guys today. I just don't feel like looking through tons of garbage. Is that what He says? No. He had compassion for them. Because Jesus could look at them and he could see the fact that they were harassed, that they were just, they were just being torn apart. They were, some of them physically just distraught and physically needy in so many different ways, and that they were just helpless. You, you could almost put another word in there. He could look at them, and he not only saw that, but he saw that they were hopeless. And they needed help. And they needed hope. He had compassion on them. He said they look like they're sheep without a shepherd. Isn't that something interesting for the good shepherd to say? That they, they just look like they're out there wandering and they need some help. They need some direction. They're unprotected. They're, they're just in need. And He sees them. He doesn't just see the compassion, just see what they need. He's moved by what they need. And in that moment, when he sees this crowd, he has compassion for them. He's moved by the by the needs that they have, the lostness that's around him. He's, he's not only addressing the physical stuff, he's going to address the spiritual things. He understood that his mission was to seek and to save that which was lost. So when he looks at the crowd, he looks at them and he has compassion for them and he says to his disciples in verse 37, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The harvest is plentiful. There's a lot of folks out there that are sick and needy. There's a lot of folks out there that are, that are hopeless. That are harassed and helpless. They're, they're out there. There's many of them. And yet those that are out there sharing the message of hope, proclaiming the message of the good news of Jesus Christ, showing them that there is healing for their aches and their pains, those laborers are few. And in that moment, 
Jesus begins to give some direction for us is to not just notice the crowds, not just to direct our attention to the fact that just as there were spiritual needs and hurting people then, the same is true for us today. We can't walk through our days without seeing people that are hurting and struggling. They are harassed by the stuff of this world. They are helpless. And we know the Helper. He says, so look out into the harvest. It's, it's, it's large. It's huge. But the laborers are few. So, what do we do? Pray. Pray earnestly. Pray with fervor. Pray with, with passion. Pray with emotion. That the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into His harvest field. It's His creation. It's, it's those that He made in His image. Every one of those that need help and are hurting, they need a touch from the Helper. They need a shepherd to give them direction. Pray that there would be laborers that would go out into His harvest field. The field needed some attention. So he turns to his disciples and he says, pray. So many of us, Jason included, I can pray. I'll pray for God to send laborers out and he'll touch this half of the church and this section and up here. He'll, he'll move. He'll move all those. So he'll, he'll get those laborers. Yeah, somebody else can do that. He's challenging his disciples to pray to the Lord of the harvest that He would send forth laborers into that harvest field. Let's read on. Chapter 10. And He called to Him His twelve disciples. And He gave them authority over the unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. And the names of the twelve apostles are this. First, Simon, who is called Peter. Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simon, the Can Canaanian. And Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve, Jesus sent out instructing them go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim as you go saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers cast out the demons and he goes on the whole rest of that chapter is instruction for them to go out and share the good news of Jesus. Touching lives as they go. When they encounter somebody that doesn't want to listen or is not open to what they're sharing, he says, just go on to the next person. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. I'm sending you to go and share the story. Out of all of those that were listening to him, he chose those twelve, his twelve, and said, let's go. So he urges them to pray to send out laborers into the harvest field. And then having encouraged that crowd to put that into practice, he calls the twelve out and says, hey, we've just prayed for laborers, right? We've just prayed that the Lord has sent out laborers. Guess what? You're it. Let's go. Follow my lead. I've been out here doing it. You've heard me teaching and preaching in the synagogues and in the cities. Now it's time. Let's go out and share the good news. Do you have a story worth sharing? 
Colleen Dykeman did. She had a story worth sharing. They got some national recognition back in November. Merely because she lost a ring and dug through six tons of garbage with the help of some others, and they found that ring. We have a story that's far greater than a ring being found. We have a story that's going to be far greater than sharing with you the fact that we find the keys to a Ford Escape car. Although you might hear a shout when we find them. Nothing wrong with that. But we have a story that's worth sharing. Has there been a time in your life that you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Has there been a time in your life that you've asked Him to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life and be the Lord of your life? To be your shepherd. To be your helper. Have you done that? And if so, then let the Lord convict you like He convicts me that I need to be more faithful in the sharing of that story. That I need to be looking for the opportunities and aware of those opportunities and slow enough in my busyness of life that I don't miss those opportunities to sow a seed in the harvest field. That I would at least be willing to let the world know that I am a Christian. Not just by my actions, because a lost person can look and do some things as good as I can do them as a believer. It's not about being good or bad. It's about having a relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And they need to hear that from me. They need to read that from you. They need to be able to know that that's your story of what He's done for you. And share it. Tell somebody. So here's... Here's the challenge. We're going to call it, because the BGCO is calling this, but I'm joining in. We're going to call it Share 72. Would you commit? Jesus, speak to us. Look unto the, to the fields. They are ripe and ready unto harvest. There are, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Would we pray? For God to send forth laborers into His harvest field. Would we pray for Christians to stand up and speak out about their relationship with Christ? Would I pray unto the Lord of the harvest for Him to send forth laborers into His harvest field? Would I commit to writing out my story Preacher, you say that too often. No. I'm going to continue to say it until everybody sitting here in the church has their testimony written out. Sharing your story in written form. Write it down. I'll write my letter of faith in the next 72 hours. Share 72. I'm going to write it. On the table as you leave, I'm going to have some folks. I need four or five volunteers to help us as we leave here in a few minutes. Stand at the door. Here's a letter, here's a bookmark, and here's a track if you need it. And these are things. Take them. This legacy letter idea. Write out your testimony. Write it in the form of a letter that you're leaving for your grandkids, for your great-grandkids, for the person that's going to get your home when you're gone, for whatever it may be. You write that letter and you tell them your legacy of faith. You write it out. You say, I don't even have kids yet. Why would I write it to my... You write your letter to your future mate. Write your letter to your kids. Write your letter. Write it out. What God's done for you and the difference He's made in your life and how you want them to know the Jesus that you know. There's an instruction sheet back there that will just give you some guidelines as to how to write that letter. You write it. And then share that letter... Or share your story with somebody in the next 72 hours. Write it and share it. Oh, 
could you be bold enough to put your story on your Facebook social status and let the world that would read it know that you're a Christian? Would you send that letter to somebody that they might receive it in the mail? Would you venture across the street or down the road or across the hall at where you work or across the table in the lunchroom to share your story with someone? Share 72. The next 72 hours from noon today, I'll even give you 76, 78 hours. We'll gather back together on Wednesday night. And part of what we're going to do Wednesday night is celebrate what God has done. Just the fact that I actually wrote my letter, we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate the fact that we've spent off and on over the last 72 hours praying for folks to be sent into the harvest field as laborers for Christ. We're going to celebrate the fact that I took a step and I, and I took this track and I, and I left it when I ate out and I left it with the waiter or waitress. I said, man, this, the story that's contained in here changed my life. Maybe it'll change yours too. And I share the story. Will you do something in the next 72 hours to be a laborer in the Lord's harvest field? For the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Would God look down on us Instead of seeing three or four people digging through the trash garbage looking for a lost wedding ring, could he see a hundred, whatever, folks that are more active in the harvest field than they were yesterday? More on point, praying for laborers, sharing our story, being prepared to share our story. What would you do right now if I had you turn and face somebody that you hadn't talked with today and had you and told told you to tell your story today? Are you prepared to share your story? And then say, God, give me the opportunity. God will put divine appointments in your path. Things beyond our control. He'll bring somebody there and you'll just you'll just know and you'll sense I need to say something. God, give me the courage to say something about you. Those are my prayers. That's where I'm at. That's where I need to become more involved in kingdom work is as a laborer in the story that changed my life. Will you make that commitment to Him? Maybe you're here today and you've never committed your life to the Lord personally. You don't need to be sharing with anybody else. You can't share with anybody else what God's done for you until you've let God do something for you. So if you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as Savior and Lord, would you come and receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord? He'll forgive you of your sins. He'll come into your life. He'll be your helper, your boss, your shepherd, your guide. And He'll help you go out into your harvest field, His harvest field, as a laborer for Him. You come. Say, preacher, I need to give my life to Christ. Maybe you'd come to this altar and just say, Lord, help me. Write my letter. Help me pray for laborers. Help me to be a laborer myself in the harvest field. Maybe you'll do that right where you are. But let's stand together. Father, this morning, We know that Your mission was to send Your Son to seek and to save that which was lost, to provide a way for that to happen. We know that He did that, and we, many of us, if not all of us, have received that as our own, a personal relationship with You. So may You stir within us a deeper desire, a more active approach, going out into your harvest field where it's ripe and ready. Help us to respond to this Share 72 challenge. We use these moments to make those commitments. 
in Jesus' name.